Sweet Talk is a weekly 20-minute podcast brought to you by the Continuing Education Workforce Training Division of Idaho State University's College of Technology. This podcast is part of our continuing outreach efforts, and the format is conversation. We're having conversations with businesses, professionals, entrepreneurs, community agencies, and in all cases, difference makers. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and SoundCloud. So subscribe today. Take 20 minutes and hear from people living in your community who are making a difference in your community. It's time to get started with Sweet Talk. Hello, everyone. This is Jason Batalden here at uh, Continuing Education Workforce Training, and welcome to Sweet Talk. Uh, we are excited to have a couple guests on our show today, but um, I got to take the opportunity. Paul is not with me today. Um, he's let me do this show solo. So uh, I have got like maybe weeks or episodes of being able to tease Paul uh, for not showing up here at the podcast on Sweet Talk. Um, and so a little different unique format too is there's just one host and we've got two guests today and we've got two really exciting people. So um, I'm going to introduce first Scott Stevens. Now, those of you that know or listen to Sweet Talk, Sweet Talk know Scott Stevens. He's been on several episodes. Uh, he's our business consultant here at Sweet. He does an excellent job. Um, you've probably heard him talk about the construction combine that we've done, uh, completed now just our third construction combine, uh, even though we had a pause in a year there. But but Scott, uh, I'm going to hit the timer here and say welcome. But um, can I just... I just want to start off this whole podcast by saying uh, this was a phenomenal year. I think you did, um, you and your team, I think the contractors, I think Home Depot, AGC, National Guard, I think the, uh, just that combined help made this uh, a, an excellent combine. Um, and it was fun to witness on my end. Uh, I liked being just the, the gopher guy. That was fun. And it was fun to watch uh, the show and, and how it happened. So, hey, Scott, I'm going to hit the timer. And then I want you to uh, talk to us a little bit about this year. Give us a little background uh, for those that maybe don't have an idea. And then um, let's let's go from there. Yeah. Well, hey, Jason, thank you. Um, I just, uh, yeah, it, the construction combine, this was a challenging year for, I think, everybody, right? Like, yeah. I mean, we're coming out of the coming out of COVID, out of this pandemic, everything's been shut down. And, um, and but we decided back in September that we were going to go forward, at least start planning for the construction combine um, with the hope that things would start to clear up by by the spring of this of 2021. And so we, um, we started doing that. And uh, yeah, it, it ended up that we had three other locations that decided to do a construction combine as well, um, Twin Falls, Idaho Falls, and then also CUNA, Idaho. Um, they, they decided to do it and um, they were all very successful. Um, you know, and I think one of the things like, and I, I talked about this before at the construction combine, like I feel like the construction combine at the time, like doing that event was, was more than just like helping uh, veterans get sheds, more than helping kids get training. But I think it was helping the community move forward you know, mm. as we come out of the out of the pandemic. It was kind of, it was somewhat uh, ceremonial, if you will, or um, symbolic. Um, and so, yeah, that was kind of, you know, so there's a lot of good things that happened, but for, for some of the listeners that maybe don't know what a construction combine is or what, what, what we do with that, it's a two day event. We team up with um, several different other organizations like Home Depot and, um, and contractors in the area and other, uh, other uh, people that are concerned about the, uh, the housing or the construction industry. And we team up with them and we put together a the, the two day event. The first day is all training in different trades in the construction industry, like electrical and framing and plumbing, um, drywall, things like that, that are all involved usually in vertical, um, vertical construction. And then the next day, uh, Home Depot um, or like in some other areas and other organizations will donate material and then we build sheds. We put together sheds and then those sheds are donated to um, area veterans, people that have fought in, uh, in all different wars. So we had people, that, uh, you know, the Korean War um, all the way mm -hmm. up to the current um, global war on terror. And so mm -hmm. we it's a it's a fantastic event. Um, we, we're it's exciting to be involved in it. Um, it's exciting to start it. And, and again, maybe some more background, like uh, Gary and I, like, you know, our, the, our boss, the director, Gary Salazar, um, it kind of came about like we, 
I had gone out and talked to the Builders Association about doing some other type of training, process improvement training, or finding some whatever kind of training opportunities that they might need. But they um, they came back and like, we're at, hey, we we just want we just need people to work in the industry. Like, how, oh. what can we do about that? Right. And that's kind of the impetus of what happened. And and um, I was kind of pulling some ideas together. And Gary um, poked his head in my office and was asking me about how my meeting went. And I was kind of telling him what I was trying to do. And he's like, hey, why don't you do like, a, he called it a ready-made workforce. He's like, why don't you do some training? And then people can hire the people out of the, out yeah. of this, uh, this pool of talent. And so that was the beginning of this great saga that we're involved in with the construction combines. And so, you know, it's interesting. Excited. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't mean to cut you off, Scott. I apologize, but I guess, yeah. you know, me, I, I didn't come in, I wasn't part of that first year. Um, and I came in on the second year and then Obviously, a year ago, we had COVID put the brakes on and we were able to bring it back this year, which we were excited about. But I, I think what's interesting from my point of view is I've seen how the construction kind, combine kind of morphed, right? Um, to go back to your very first point that you brought up when you talked about, you know, it was this idea to get people trained to go to work, but it has kind of morphed into a, a, a larger community event. I mean, the goal still is to get people trained. The, pull, the goal is still to try to encourage people and to provide rudimentary skills in the construction trade so that they can go to work um, and, and really find out if this is what they want to do. Um, but it, it, it's taken on a, a, a more, uh, a bigger thing. I mean, like sponsors and who gets involved and those types of things. And, and I know that's kind of Annie's wheelhouse, so I don't want to steal any of your thunder, but let, let um, me just kind of jump yeah. in here and let, then we, let's get Lanny in on this. Yeah. Uh, but like, um, but yeah, Jason, what you're hitting on is one thing that we kind of it became an alignment. Like I always like to talk about alignment. Yeah, like that's good. there were several different objectives that we wanted to hit with this, or I, I don't know if we wanted to hit initially, like you were mentioning, like initially we were just like, hey, let's get people trained. But we began to see like this a need in the community for several other things. And we just created, it, it created alignment, you know, from, getting, you know, uh, honoring veterans. I mean, especially I, I have, I mean, I like to talk about it a lot, but Vietnam veterans have a big special place in my heart. I'm a veteran from the global war on terror. You know, I fought in Iraq. I did some, you know, worked a little bit in like Afghanistan and Pakistan and stuff like that during my time in the service. But my, my heart, had, I have a special place in my heart for those guys from Vietnam because those guys didn't get a hero's welcome. And so being able to honor them is a big part of the construction combine. And then the other part is, yeah, getting people, getting people excited about our community and building our community. And I think that's really like a lot, like, you know, part of, you mentioned the team that we have and putting this together, like Annie is a big part of pulling that community in. Um, she does, she does a lot of work, you know, with, with sponsorships and also talking to contractors to get them on board. And so I think maybe, maybe we should give Annie a little bit of time to kind of talk about her experience, yeah. and like why she likes being involved in the construction combine and, um, and yeah, kind of her experience along those lines. Um, hi there, I'm Annie Harrison, and I was a ISU college student. I had uh, Scott for a class, and he stood up and said, hey, I need some people to help, <laughs> contractors. I said, well, I have a husband and, and his friend, and, and they're going to do this. Well, that's where it all began. Then, he, then I was um, his intern for a while, and uh, this just kind of morphed. The idea was so wonderful. It's like I always say, you know what, you can, uh, these kids can take this opportunity, whether they go to school, whether they don't use it for years, and they will have this skill the rest of their lives. So if something does go wrong in their life, or they need a job, they have to hurry and make some money. All they have to do is go there and say, hey, I know how to do this. It's the most valuable thing that we can give to this community. Our community here in Pocatello is one of the most giving, fantastic communities that I think that anybody can live in. And I'll tell you, I walk into many offices. Sometimes I sit out and wait for the people that have to give the money. And uh, I'm, a, I'm a little bit persistent, but it's funny because now in the third year, I don't have to be because people have already heard about it. They know about it. They know that maybe if we get these kids and we teach them a trade, some of them will go this way and not that way. Giving them an opportunity, opportunity is everything. 
uh, this idea of when Scott first explained to me, I, I was in awe. I was like, this has got to be the best thing uh, uh, anywhere. And many, many, many people agree with me. I already have the day after the combine was over, I probably had 30 emails of people wanting to give money. Right. And wanting so, yeah. And, and I guess that's what I, I, sorry to interrupt again, Annie, but I guess my, I wanted to step on this point for a second. Number one, um, you know, you've already alluded to the reception you get, right? Is because the idea and because the purpose and what it does is so good, but, but to touch a minute on how do people get involved, right? Because not everyone could swing a hammer. Not everyone can pour the concrete, you know, not everyone put the roof on, but yet there are a lot of partners. So, so how does, pe how do people get involved, even if they're not the one uh, maybe supplying the tool or teaching how to use the tool? Well, they come, they help us, they volunteer. We have the nurses there. We have uh, my friend, Holly, that works with the arts and letters. She came and helped hand out sweatshirts. Mm -hmm. So many people, whatever they want to do, people, you know, if people give us money, say a bank. And they want to come by and help us to maybe give mm -hmm. out lunches, anything. We always have a place for them. Right. We so there's different levels, them. right? There's different levels. Like there's contractors, there's sponsors. Um, I mean, so what, what do those look like? Lisa, maybe let me uh, jump in. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah let, let me jump in really, really quick. And I think Annie really hit on that is, the, is that, um, I, I just kind of back up is like, we, we talked about this being a community event and um and it's been kind of an interesting kind of thing is that uh, the construction industry touches so much in our community right it's not just you know swinging a hammer or driving in a nail or you know i mean there's so many different trades that go into building a home mm -hmm. or um you know building a road or something like that but then there's also i mean a lot of it touches out into other parts of the community like fast food for instance is a big part and that doesn't have to necessarily have a big part in like building a house but like i mean where do where do the workers go to eat they you know, mm -hmm. sure you know, Burger King, things like that and so they have mm -hmm. you know there's an opportunity there like hey they and it's kind of funny we were talking to contractors before they're like hey uh, you know if we're not working burger king's not serving burgers or mcdonald's isn't sure, yeah. right? right that's where right a lot of their workers are going there for lunch and then i mean annie touched on also like you know the medical excuse me the medical community mm -hmm. um you know, you know, it's a little more uh, not as advantageous, but like, you know, we had the nurses there that were like checking guys for for COVID and stuff like that. That were making sure that everybody was healthy, but they were also there because construction can be very dangerous, right? I mean, it, there's, um, I think anybody that's worked in construction for any period of time has had some type of injury. Hopefully, sure. it's been very minor, but like they've had some type of injury that they've had to to deal with. And so having nurses and having like the medical community involved is a big deal. And like, and what we're finding too, is like a lot of medical is like, they want to get ahead of the game and see, make sure that that guy's healthy or gal's healthy enough to work in the industry. Sure. Right. So a lot of times they'll be, they'll do, we, we call it a functional movement screening, but they'll, they'll do those things to say, okay, yeah. Can he, this guy lift a certain amount of weight or this gal lift a certain amount of weight? Can they, you know, have this type of endurance? Can they bend in this certain way? Um, you know, can they touch their toes or something like that? You know, again, not, um, but and like by doing so, they can say, okay, this guy can work in right. our industry. Well, you know, Annie, I want to come back to you for just a second because you touched on something banks, right? By the way, somebody's got to sell these houses when they get built. Someone's got to, uh, you know, well, we have a lot of loans on the property. Have, we have a lot of tile companies, and they are just love to come in and and uh, and help us, uh, you know. Ashley, she's uh, from Ameritidal. They, mm -hmm. they're all just so eager to help us. Uh, Pioneer, there, there's so many. The list is so long. Um, people show up out there. That's, you know what, that's the one thing that I like. It's just not about giving us money. Yeah, right. It's not giving us a handout. It's not about giving us any kind donation. They actually show up out there. It's interesting. They want to see what's going on. Cole mm -hmm. Chevrolet, our, he gave us two trucks to with power to use out there mm -hmm. he was like three days you know all three days looking around people give us tents you know you help us put up a tent uh it's just it's amazing to me how many people come together to help these kids in the community and and probation and parole and maxim people that have a hard time finding a job if they just had a skill they'd have a job right 
and the the skill is the the most important thing but right Scott, you know, we have to feed them we you know uh, those people have to eat those i mean it's it's a com it's community involvement that's what it is everybody benefits i don't see one situation in this that, that where someone doesn't benefit right you know so, either feel yeah. really good about yourself that you that you helped yeah. a bunch of kids feel really good about yourself that you helped somebody that just got out of prison get a skill and now he's got a job and he can change his life it's amazing right. to me and everybody's yeah, want, involved yeah and i want to just kind of capitalize on what andy's saying too or like kind of caveat i guess is that also like hey if you want to be involved in the construction combine and you're like how would i be involved how would my business be involved call us we'll figure it out like right yeah. um i mean this this is crazy so the construction combine won an award like two years ago at the state of idaho and like i was there and um we were we we're sitting at a table it was like myself and brad landon from home depot and we're sitting at this table and there's a guy from apple um that had come to this you know it, it was like it wasn't just for the construction combine it was for some other things and there's a guy from apple that had been sent to Boise to, you know, sell Apple computers or whatever and like make inroads with other people. And we started talking about the construction combine and could Apple be involved in the construction combine mm -hmm. um, or in construction, you know, I mean, cause like, you know, contractors need, you know, are working more with IT and computers and stuff like that. And so how could, how could they be involved? And so bottom line is, is like, we'll figure out how to get you involved in the construction combine. Because again, like the construction industry touches so many parts of our, of sure. our lives. You know, um, accountants. Yeah, go ahead. Well, I guess this is what I was going to touch on, though, kind of coming back to your wheelhouse, Scott, is providing that training. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the, the and then providing a workforce. And so, you know, say, and this is this, this event has, uh, you know, I, I, I'm going to, uh, this event has the feels, right? I mean, it does make the difference. But there's a there's the 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 sharp point of this thing the thing that really makes a difference is that it directly impacts workforce and right now in the reality we're at at least in southeast idaho uh workforce is almost the most important thing i mean it we're not running out of work um, we're not running out of money to build we're not running out of ground to build we're running out of people to put these things on the ground well you know it was like contractors you know they're I think kind of how this started was they were talking to Scott saying, you know, we don't have, we don't have any skilled labor. What are we going to do? You know, they're working their self from sun up to sundown with just a few guys and, you know, they need skilled labor. I mean, you can, you can hire anybody to pick up, you know, and, and do a, a clean up the area, but that doesn't really take any skill. You need skilled labor. And I, what I like most about this is our stations have grown. And you see the look on somebody, one of these kids' faces, like, you know, my husband does the drywall. You see the look on these kids' faces after they learn how to do it and after they've done it. Because it's hands-on. These contractors take two days of their time and they really help these kids yeah. and watch them and train them and let them do it. And the look on their faces are are priceless because now they know how to do something. They can even fix their mom's wall that they put a hole, in, you know, <laughs> how happy is mom going to be, you know? Yeah. No. Yeah. It, and, and I touching on that too, like Annie, you're bringing up some great points. Cause like one of the guts, one of the great things about the construction combine. Yeah. is just the, the confidence building that it, that it provides as well. Like, I mean, to be honest, to be a hundred percent honest, like, are we going to build an expert um, employee or expert contractor you know worker in in two days no it's just not that's not going to happen but are we going to set that person on a on a course that can change their life absolutely it's it's a starting point it's a it's a place to get in there and 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 start and um and you know and then they can kind of figure out where they want to go after that and um the other part about it too is it's such a um it can be such a high visibility um event that it can draw in so many people into it that um you know that yeah, I can get people like excited because of what's happening. And like, every time I go to these, these combines, um, when I'm at ours, obviously I'm, I'm, you know, in the middle of it all and making things happen and, you know, coordinating these different things and stuff like that. So I don't get a chance to talk as much, but when I go and visit other ones, um, I always end up talking with contractors and they always are bringing up, they always are like, why are kids being funneled into college and not being told about other opportunities that are available to them. That that mm -hmm. that is one of like that is a big theme 
that's always coming to that's always coming out that when I'm talking to contractors, like some contractors be like, I don't have any college, but you know what? I'm not wondering where my next meal is coming from either. You know, I right. I'm doing really well, you know, I, know I, I've got these things going or whatever. And so it, it's a big, it's a big conversation as to like, Hey, where, cause like, I mean, let's just be real. Like with statistics, right. I mean, I heard a statistic that they, I mean, like 50% of high school kids, like maybe 50, 50 to 75% of high school kids do leave high school and go to college, but a very small percentage of them actually finish college. Mm-hmm. You know, that's one of the big situations that, you know, big, uh, not situation, but big uh, sure. issues that the state or any, I, and I don't think it's just relative to Idaho. Yeah, that, right. No, that number right. of, um, you know, some college or no degree uh, college debt, right. That's a, yeah. that's a big growing number. You know, uh, you, you nailed this, Scott, and, and you talked about that workforce, talk about the training, talk about the opportunity. Um, but one of the things, and, and, you know, Annie has talked about the sponsors, but Scott, there are, you know, essentially, at least for us and, and statewide, there are three really crucial sponsors that, that are, uh, are essential to the success of the program. And so maybe we should just talk about that a little bit. And in, in yeah. I appreciate you bringing that up, Jason, because yeah, there really are. There are some people like, um, I, I'm, I'm going to put a shout out for us, though. I mean, the, the, um, Idaho State University um, you know, the key education workforce training, but even the, I mean, just the big university itself, you know, pro, from Kevin, Kevin Satterley down to like his, you know, his marketing guy, uh, what, what's Stuart? Stuart. Yeah. Stuart. Stuart. Yeah. They, they have given us a lot of, um, of, of operating space to make this happen. And I think they see the opportunities that are available to them, but like then our other, um, you know, our, our big sponsor, like the national guard, the national guard was at every single one of the construction combines this year, every single one of them. And, and not just like, um, you know, there to recruit kids, but like they were involved in the construction combine. Je- uh, Sean Edwards was a trainer for the, for the framing station at ours at the one in Idaho falls and the one in CUNA. Yeah. Like he was at all three of those. <laughs> That's that, great. Poor dude, that poor dude, after the end of that, after that, um, after the last one, that dude looked like he was just going to fall over. Right. I mean, <laughs> but, I mean, but, and, and this interesting thing about Sean, like, and, you know, if people know anything about, you know, about the military, he's a, he's a major in, in the national guard. And most of the time, um, you know, officers aren't necessarily known to be, um, I don't want to say like hands on. Be careful, Scott. Be careful. Yeah, I know. I, I was an officer, <laughs> so I can talk this way, right? We always, you know, but he, he hands on teaching these kids, working with these kids. Like, I mean, you wouldn't know that he was a pretty important person in the National Guard um, by any fantastic type. Fantastic guy. Like almost that. Yeah, fantastic guy. AGC, they, they're like, hey, look, we're going to donate to every single one of these programs in the state. Um, if you're going to do it, let us know. So, I mean, big, big deal. Like, and then the, the builders associations, most of them are the ones that actually push making this happen. And so, and, Home then, Depot. <laughs> and then Home Depot is huge. Home Depot, without Home Depot, it just couldn't happen. Like they, and, and I want to make a big shout out to just getting down, drilling down is like the, the um, I mean, Brad Landon here at Pocatello, but like, um, gosh, I can't remember Leaf's last name over there in CUNA. Um, Tom Holmes over at um, up in uh, Idaho Falls. I mean, I'm naming these guys by name because I, the way it works at Home Depot is like Home Depot is a corporation, you know, and they and uh, Ryan Brady up there, like he's at he's at corporate and he is a big proponent of the construction combine. He sees the benefit of it, but you have to decide as a store to be involved in the construction combine. That, that you know, Home Depot doesn't make a directive down to its stores to say you're going to do this. The store manager and like they have what they call a team captain that they do a lot of like community work they have to decide whether or not they're going to do a construction combine and they have to do stuff on their end to make it happen and um and you so know these guys, Scott, i want to interject because i uh i call other places that's part of my job at, at isu now is calling other places and introducing them to the construction combine mm-hmm. and uh then you and i help them along yeah. and uh the really great thing about Home Depot, when I call another Home Depot in another city, they kind of already know about it and they're, they're excited about it. I've never gotten a no. Yeah. And what's cool about Home Depot is like they have a, they do like their like quarterly calls and they'll have like all of their uh, store managers in a certain area. They actually had one, like a nationwide one. And they started talking about like, they talk about a lot about like Home Depot is a very community oriented organization. Like they, if they have a store in your area, they want to be part of the community. And, um, but they talked about like their favorite uh, community organ uh, uh, projects. Um, and they brought up the Home Depot, uh, the construction combine in a nationwide 
uh, nice. conference call. It was really nice. pretty cool. Like right. know, Brad was telling me about it, and uh, he's like, "Yeah, it's pretty, yeah, he- pretty big deal." Like Brad Lennon, like he, I like to tease Brad because he's, you know, he's a very humble, very good guy. Doesn't, you know, isn't always, you know, he's a very good leader. He's, he's and he's not afraid to get out in front and stuff like that. But he's not one to like really suck up the limelight or anything like yeah. that but i i like to tease him and to call him like you're like the golden boy at home depot you know and here he is here, here in pocatello idaho but um but like when i mean they they have brad's a big deal i i mean he'll be like i'm not a big deal but like he kind of is in a sense like you know they've asked him to come into you know back to atlanta and run some certain things sure. and, right right and like you know, I, I like living here i like doing these things but i i bring all of this up is because yeah home depot is a huge but we we want to coordinate with as many people that want to be a part of this. If I right. mean, if there's like a if there's a statewide organization or a statewide company, um, yeah, that anything wants to, mm-hmm. that wants to be involved in this and like wants to help make this happen in other areas. In fact, like I just want to you know pivot back to the National Guard. The National Guard, they're actually going to probably um, coordinate uh, a construction combine next year in Nampa. I was talking, you know, when I was over in CUNA, National Guard was helping us out and they had some, the recruiter from Nampa was over there and he's like, hey, I'm, I want to do this in Nampa. I've got these connections. I'll, I will coordinate it. And, and so we started talking about different things and getting him the information, but, um, but yeah. It's just the the rural situation that we've, we've been talking about. There's a lot of rural areas around here and those kids kind of don't have a chance. So we want to give them a chance. And I was talking to Braxton Beasley, who, you know, is an awesome national guard person. And he, you know, he was like, yes, 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 let's do it. I've got this bowl of, of independence high saying, yes, let's do it. Three hotels said, Hey, we'll bring them. We'll put them up. You know, that's just, how but, our community is with right. this this uh you know the impact that this has all right so now i gotta put the brakes on you two yeah we the timer went off like months. 22 minutes ago yeah. <laughs> so yeah. but i do i do want to just summarize something up um and so forgive me for overstepping just a little bit That's but fine. the idea the nice thing about the construction combine is that it's portable and it's adaptable for your community this isn't an idaho thing this isn't a western united states thing this is anywhere that you can get your community to come together um, and create this two-day event Um, and and i'm just going to toss this out and i'm going to try to keep scott and andy Andy under control here but they would be more than willing to talk to anyone about how to bring this event to their community Um, and so um, I just want to kind of just say that I know we're kind of ran out of time, guys. Yeah. Can I can I give you like thirty seconds to kind of tie yeah. this up? Let, let me jump on that just really quick. Is that um, one of the things like we? Yeah, absolutely. We'll we'll talk to anybody if you're interested in doing this. We want we want this to happen in your area. Um, just a couple of things like um, is like if yeah like if you're like part of like a city council or part of something that is, that's out there like hey how do we make this happen? You give us a call. Like you, it, it, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you either and say this is a very easy event to pull together. It's not. Yeah, um, it's very. It's it. But at, at the same time, we we have we have put together a playbook. We have put together like, hey, this is how to go out and do it. These are some things to think about. These are th- some things to do. And and then we're we are available. Like you can call me and I will walk you through what I've done, what I've seen other organiz- or other areas do, and I will help you put it together. And so, yeah, like, um, I, I, mean, I, I take liberty and saying Scott and I will go anywhere and you can call me at 208-317-0116. I answer all my phone calls okay. and, uh, yeah, I, we will be happy to talk to you. And I've talked to a bunch of environmental city council people, the environmentalists everywhere, and they are so excited about this. So I, I mean, you know, the, i i say everybody get on board right right so now i'm gonna take over because you know okay. i'm just i'm gonna tell you you guys i gotta shut you down we had this conversation before the podcast yeah. you promised me 20 minutes uh, right. that was 14 minutes right. ago so no, really, really no, no, no 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 guys i tease first of all look i uh i just want to throw this out again say look um this event is a special event it's unique event but uh, the beauty of the event is that it will work in your community because you can do whatever you need to do to make it work. Uh, and so if you want to get a hold of Scott Stevens, 
uh, cetrain at isu.edu is the easy or the general way. Um, call, so call us at 208-282-3372. Uh, we'll put the phone numbers and links and email addresses, obviously, in the descriptions of this podcast. Um, please share it. Uh, send us out to uh, whoever. Uh, you know, this is a good conversation um, and can maybe uh, be a good intro into uh, you having a conversation with someone about bringing this to your community. So, Jason, um, yeah. Maybe one more thing to check, you know, you obviously go to that and they can get a hold of me and Annie, but also the constructioncombine.org, yep. our website. Go check that out. On the on the front web page, you can see we did a great video. In fact, Jason was very instrumental in that video that we did. Oh, um, yeah. Love that's it. right. Yeah. So, fantastic video uh, about what it, you know, kind of give you an idea of what it yep. looks like. So, the, thanks. Great catch, Scott. Constructioncombine.org. It's all spelled out. Uh, be sure to check that out. And that link will obviously be in the description as well. All right, thank you guys. You. Thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you, Jason. Yep. Appreciate Bye. it. Bye. Bye. Bye.